All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, um, to our backup recovery office hour session today. Um, my name is Tim Chen, the Director of Product Management at Oracle. And um, today uh, we'll be talking about uh, reducing cyber risk with zero data loss protection. And I have my team as well here, Marco Calmasini and Kelly Smith. And if you have any questions during this session, um, please use the Q&A. Um, feel free to um, ask any questions or any uh, elaboration on, on the topics as we go through. And uh, hopefully this will be an informative session for you. So first, our safe harbor statement, as usual. It's a moment to read. So um, we have some interesting topics to uh, cover today um, with cybersecurity. Um, you know, first of all, um, let's just talk about why uh, cybersecurity matters uh, and why is that such a big deal today um, in, in uh, today's IT economy and uh, also within your internal uh, company assets as well. Uh, we'll also then talk about key cybersecurity tenants, um, what those are, um, and we'll also talk about how the Oracle's uh, backup recovery solution, um, in this case, recovery appliance, um, can help you protect against um, database and backups from these attacks. And then we'll wrap up with um, some additional pointers and um, call to action to learn more. Um, so, you know, the headlines today, you really can't miss it. Um, cyber attacks and cybersecurity is, is a big topic. Um, it's been this way for um, several years now. And uh, what we're seeing is that um, these attacks are really becoming kind of the next generation of business outages. So, you know, traditional sense where you have um, mitigations against hardware failures or disasters, um, the threat of cyber attacks is um, much more difficult, if you will, um, to, um, to mitigate. Um, there are various ways these attacks can happen, much more sophistication involved okay, in these um, types of threats. Uh, and so in, in many cases, they pose the largest security threat um, to paralyze an organization, you know, uh, much like uh, any kind of big disaster, any kind of outage at a company, there are consequences, both financial and legal consequences to uh, customer data, to um, uh, customer access to the data, um, your internal kind of organizations being affected by loss of access to that data, right? And of course, if that news makes the the public sphere, um, this can affect your reputation, right? So um, this is now paramount um, on top of all uh, customers' lists. Um, our product management group speaks to customers on a regular basis um, on these topics and certainly on their mind as well. This is just a couple of things to highlight. You know, we've seen news here. These are all public kind of news presses. Um, UCSF um, in the uh, last several months have had medical data servers encrypted, especially in this um, kind of global health situation that we're in, that's not something you want to hear. And uh, was repeated that they paid a ransom to actually unlock um, and to retrieve that data. We also see that um, financial services are a prime candidate for cyber attacks. I mean, obviously, uh, financial services um, hold kind of, you know, a big lifeline in our economy. Uh, and so any kind of attack or any compromise obviously has much more impact and Companies are maybe more willing to pay, um, you know, the the attackers to get the data back, right? So um, we have seen, you know, various cases, travel X, um, where ran, you know, multi-million dollar ransom was paid um, because of systems being offline uh, due to ransomware, Capital One, um, Wawa Card. Uh, these are all breaches that happened where customer details were exposed online. And uh, we just saw a recent IMF report where the impact to financial institutions due to cyber attacks was assessed to be over $100 billion, um, which is, you know, not a small amount, right? Um, this is how prevalent and how uh, impacting these threats can be, uh, specifically. In response to these, um, these cases, um, various regulatory policies and government um, uh, kind of uh, controls have come into place, um, specifically against cybersecurity. And uh, just to mention these because, uh, you know, it, it's not just 
customer reputation at stake, but it's really the government has a stake as well, uh, and the authorities because of the economy, right, that we all operate in, and of the um, uh, attacks that could even happen in the public sector, right, uh, which is yet another place for um, attacks to, to really focus on. So in the, in the US, we've seen uh, examples such as Federal Reserve matter requiring attention, uh, notes being sent out to leading financial services institutions, which is um, to notify institutions that there are certain areas or certain um, uh, kind of discoveries, if you will, um, where in their systems need to be evaluated and need attention um, for cybersecurity. We've also seen regulations from the uh, uh, other government bodies, such as the FFIEC and the SEC, for tighter controls, um, retention, and protection against cyber attacks. We also see um, the government uh, National Institute of Standards framework for improving infrastructure cybersecurity. So you can take a look at these links later, um, and you can request this uh, this presentation. But it's it's definitely happening, and and we're seeing this um, across the board internationally. Um, same thing. Um, regulations have come about. Many of you are probably familiar with GDPR, which is specific for EU citizen data protection. And we can see that um, there are actual fines now to move companies um, to uh, institute this these requirements, right? Um, encryption of personal data, uh, being able to keep such data um, available and retained until um, that that data is destroyed. Okay, and and also need to need to be able to access and uh, get that data in a timely manner in the event of any kind of incident. So we do definitely see fines being paid out. You know, there's um, one from Marriott that I highlighted here, um, 100 million euro, uh, you know, fine for cyber breach a few years ago here of guest records, right? So it's um, it's a it's a very serious matter, um, and so Oracle obviously as a, um, uh, a sort of a big part in the IT infrastructure and hopefully while you're attending this call um, can offer solutions and uh, uh, sort of mitigations, if you will, uh, against these threats. Okay. And we see other fines here that have played out across various countries. Um, UK, you can see, is kind of the highest now uh, with over 315 million euros um, at uh, just three, three separate fines that have been ma made. So let's um, talk generally about cybersecurity tenants and then just talk about the Oracle uh, solution stack, uh, specifically recovery appliance. So um, the standard industry model that uh, companies and, and our vendors, you know, and ourselves, you know, kind of go to, it's called the CIA triad, right? This is a very familiar model um, across the board, um, meaning confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Now, the, the step isn't about just focusing on these tenants as is, it's focusing on these tenants with a focus on cybersecurity. And not just for your production data, but also for the backup data. And why is that? You know, uh, attackers who have to go um, after data in a production sense have to go after many multiple servers, many multiple places across you know, different regions, across different network zones. So the, the um, work, if you will, to attack the production data could be manifold. You know, it could be take you know quite a long time to find specific servers. Whereas your backup data could be more centralized and in sort of consolidated fashion. So if the backup data can be attacked, then those um, those cyber attackers um, have an easier way to retrieve the data and to do something with it. Right? So that's what we're seeing is not just production data, which is everyone should be concerned about and, and uh, protecting, but also how easy or hard it is for attackers to get to the backup data, to unpack it, to see what it is, and to do something useful with it um, on their side, right? So just keep that in mind as we go through. So confidentiality, right? Um, this applies in a few ways here. You wanna ensure that your production and backup data are encrypted. Right. Obviously, encryption is the sort of the mainstay of any kind of security process. But also, you want to have strong access control right, to that data. And beyond that, uh, just the 
sort of general statement about um, access control, um, and you need to really think about application aware um, encryption and control, right? Uh, and that is because uh, applications use systems in various ways. And so when you talk about protecting data, you also want to talk about how protection of that data, securing that data, doesn't affect your production, uh, production, you know, performance, resources, and user access to that data, right? So those things have to be really thought about and kept in balance as you um, evaluate and look at, you know, uh, assess the risk uh, if you're in, in your current environment. It's also important to um, enforce separation of duty among the various IT roles. And as you can see, just listing typical roles, the application developer, your database administrator, systems admin, and then your storage admin, meaning that each of these roles do not have ability to modify data owned by the other role, right? These roles should all have um, controls, you know, lined up and also data that's, you know, logically separated from, from each other, right? So there's, um, you know, way, there are mechanisms to be able to, to encrypt and to, you know, allow only viewing by a certain group, those kinds of controls should be instituted as well. And also, you know, very important is that the production and backup data cannot both be modified or deleted by the same IT role, right? That would defeat the purpose of having a separation of duty, especially with production and backup data, like I mentioned before, um, both of these are critical. And in a lot of cases, even backup data is your last resort, and that really cannot be compromised or, um, or attacked. Let's move on to integrity, which is about um, ensuring that the data that is um, backed up, um, that is protected, can actually be recovered, right? Um, it has application level recoverability. And so I want to make this note because just because you have a copy of the data somewhere doesn't mean necessarily that the application can actually do something useful with it, right? Um, there's a lot of intelligence, right, in your software side, the applications use, uh, and there's an assumption of how the data should look like and how it can be restored and recovered. And especially for databases, this is um, important concept to keep in note, right? Um, databases aren't just a bunch of files that are just sitting on a storage box, but there's a very specific, you know, application function using those files, and they have to uh, be restored and recovered in a very specific manner uh, in order to be opened and then read, right? So this, this key part in the second bullet, you know, we just want to highlight that um, storage-based only kind of mechanisms for validation and keeping files uh, uh, with integrity does not necessarily mean that your application level recoverability is taken care of. What that requires is application level intelligence, right? You need to have something at the app level that can give you the foresight and ability to know that data is, is uh, recoverable, you know, that data is pristine and has been validated. And you want to do this as well, again, with minimal impact to the running of the application of the production systems. You want to prevent the backup data to be modified or deleted when needed. So that the idea is, um, you know, you have a pristine data, uh, which is your, what we call our, um, our vault copy, if you will, uh, which is a separate copy for your production and DR. And in this vault copy, you should have mechanisms to be able to say, I want this data to never be written or modified at all, and we do that through read-only media, right? So, um, you know, in a lot of auditing and government kind of authority cases, um, they need proof that your backup data, um, yeah, even when it's not under attack, but just as a regular kind of uh, review of records, needs to ensure that no access or nothing has been modified um, on, that, on that backup data. And then, of course, with that is that auditing, right, is that activities of both production and backup system, user access, changes done, have to be um, really, re you know, very closely audited, right? That's your final kind of record of truth and allows you to, to kind of unwind back to when maybe um, uh, bad changes happened uh, from an attack or some other uh, bad issue that, uh, that occurred. And then lastly, just covering availability, right? Availability means that your production and backup systems 
are impervious to attacks. That um, if you do uh, suffer an attack, that your data is not uh, not compromised for access. And this can the attacks can happen by human or non-human means. Um, one of the other kind of correlates to this is limiting the attack surface so that you can kind of uh, reduce the amount of uh, opportunities for an attack to happen. For example, number of components in your production or backup system, number of connections between the production and, and the backup system themselves. If a problem happens on your production system and data has been maligned, you do not want that maligned data to flow into your backup, right? Uh, and to go unnoticed. That would be uh, kind of a compromise on both sides. So again, going back to integrity, there needs to be a way to make sure that application level integrity is retained and that data is not just copied um, kind of blindly, but that the data is actually being validated and can be used for recovery purposes um, in that application. We also want to uh, make sure that operational processes are automated to the extent possible and locked down. Um, this reduces the need for any kind of access for human intervention, right? That should be kept to a minimum. That by itself reduces the ability um, for uh, non-authorized or malicious users to come in and, and do harm. The final point here is about in the case you have to recover the data um, and say your data is held at ransom now and um, you have your backup, that backup should be reliably recovered to any point in time or completely without any data loss um, if desired. So, you know, with a typical backup, you may not have the most recent copy of the data available. So you might actually lose data in the process of trying to, to recover what you can. That's the worst case. I mean, that's the case no one wants to be in because that has impact on your internal and your business operations. So a solution ideally uh, for availability would allow you to restore and recover that data without any data loss to separate mach you know, machines um, that the original machine is compromised but um, you don't you, you don't in fact need that original machine anymore because all the data is kept intact up until the moment that the attack happened and thus you don't pay the um, the attackers right the ransomware um, you have separate boxes that can be used and they're locked out of any kind of access uh, of the original boxes that were compromised. So why Oracle databases, right? Um, or you know, why why are they so uh, you know so important and the key part of our discussion here? You know, databases you know, run the lifeblood of most businesses today, right? Oracle is a prominent figure in this. Obviously, we like to think about it as Oracle databases hold kind of the crown jewels of your of your business, um, and so um, you know these. Uh, these databases are geared, right, uh, and why they're important for handling OLTP data warehouse workloads at scale, um, for providing security at the data level, right at the block level in the data called transparent data encryption, and all the high availability features of offered within the Oracle database itself, such as data guard and also backup recovery uh, solution through the RMN utility. Uh, I just want to mention that um, the database itself has built-in capabilities, right, um, to handle mission-critical business data. There's also an engineered system that is built specifically to run Oracle databases, you know, optimally. Right? And that's in our engineered system we call Oracle Exadata. In the backup recovery um, area, our team also developed the Zero Data Loss Recovery Appliance, which leverages that exadata framework that's for performance of running database workloads in this case it's backup and restore processing and resiliency within the exadata system itself for a first in industry system designed for oracle database protection so it's it's quite unique in our in our market uh, specifically for oracle database protection and um, this system has a number of um, you know interesting uh, capabilities uh, differentiators, if you will, that also work very well um, to satisfy the CIA triad that we saw uh, previously. So we'll go ahead and move forward then and discuss kind of the solution. 
So Recovery Appliance um, was our engineering system that I mentioned for Oracle Database Enterprise Protection. Um, sort of key technologies in our system is Recovery Assurance, which is the ability to um, capture all changes that happen on the database to be able to validate all those, all that data as database recoverable, you know, at a what we call application level validation checks, and not just ensuring that um, that a data was copied and, and check, you know, check boxed off, but that the data is consistent, that all the files are needed, that everything is needed for an actual database restore and recovery, and knowing that, right, with a status, and also providing what we call fast virtual full recovery, which we'll discuss in, in how that is in the next slide. The other uh, key technology pillars we call backup savings, right? This is always on top of mind for any kind of enterprise backup solution. Um, you want to avoid backing up redundant data. You want to avoid, you know, uh, doing more work on the production server than needed. And so the system is geared for efficient incremental forever, which means that um, a, a uh, change data is all that the system needs to provide full uh, recovery from any point in time. The system also offloads the backup processing from production servers and thus allows that production resources to do more you know, uh, valuable work, uh, such as your normal workloads of the day, you know, end of quarter kind of closing, you know, any kind of process that needs production resources, that backup, if you will, that happens every day or happens you know, several times in the day is, is, is out of that um, daily operational window. And then finally, cloud scale. Now, what we mean here is that this system can start with a small kind of set of databases for protection. And as you increase your state, as you um, add more databases for protection, it grows incrementally. It can expand storage um, to uh, multi terabytes, um, even into petabytes as needed. And the system is still treated as a single uh, backup system, right? You don't have clients, databases that need to uh, be reconfigured to back up to, you know, different recovery appliances. You can scale with a single system as, as, as you want. This also means from a cloud perspective that you have the ability to be able to offload and archive backups to a cloud storage tier in our pub Oracle um, cloud infrastructure. So if you have um, backups that are kept for a short period of time on premise and you want to have longer term retention for compliance or other type of reasons, those can be copied off to our cloud tier in a very seamless and integrated fashion um, through the recovery appliance policy. And then also so for database migration, this has been a, a you know kind of a big uh, capability uh, as a backup restore dedicated system it allows um, high scale restore for the purposes of you know, migrating databases from legacy platforms into the more modern uh, platforms, into Exadata, into um, Linux, et cetera. Um, because the system can do this uh, and offload that from the production side, um, it factors in very well also for migration activities across platforms. So at a high level, the architecture of the recovery appliance is that um, it services right any number of your Oracle databases on, running on any supported platform, any supported Oracle database version, as you see here um, to date. And the system works by accepting real-time data changes. So um, there's kind of two components to this. One is the um, real-time uh, uh, work that's going on, which is our Oracle redo logs, so the redo, uh, is shipped directly to the recovery appliance. Um, those that are familiar with DataGuard, it's the same technology used by DataGuard to keep a standby database synced up with the primary. So we have essentially all the changes up to the moment, right, um, as the production uh, is, it, it happens. The second component of this is your backups, and that is, as I said, incremental forever. So those incremental forever backups are key because they actually perform the basis or service the basis for restores. So in this kind of chart you'll uh, you'll see here, I'm just showing kind of the progression of our of our um, incremental backup strategy. So you know on the first day you you take a, a full just to seed the backups, and from that point on you have a incremental that's taken every day. So every day an incremental is taken, and you have a new what we call a virtual full backup created on our system. So that virtual full is a uh, 
legitimate, valid, um, level zero full backup that can be used by our man for any restore um, operations. Uh, the caveat is that it's actually not a physical full backup. And this is great because it's efficient, right? We don't keep a full backup on, on the storage. Uh, we only keep the changes. But in the recovery appliance catalog, uh, which, is, which is used by our man, right, uh, your client databases, it will see that there's a new virtual full backup there. And we create metadata essentially that um, uh, point to, if you will, the needed uh, data blocks to retrieve that virtual full backup. So uh, it's very efficient. Uh, every day you create the incremental, every day you get a new virtual full. So in this way, you get the best of both the worlds. You get um, incremental forever, so highly efficient. And you also get fast restores because that virtual full can be used for restore uh, as is, and you don't need to actually merge or apply those incremental blocks in a traditional recovery uh, mechanism. As I mentioned, the cloud storage is available to tear off those virtual full backups, the incremental backups as needed, or your archive logs, in fact. So you can have a separate copy that's recoverable um, from the cloud. It can be reused and restored to any location from there, both in cloud and on-premise. And we also have our DR um, appliance. This is a, essentially another recovery appliance which accepts all these incremental forever changes and the uh, redo changes, as I mentioned, and will create the virtual fulls as normal, will validate those fulls. Everything is done on that DR or replica system. From that point on, you have the option to say, um, archive longer term copies to tape or to some other warm device. If needed, we have um, integration with tape through our secure backup software that's available as well. From the point the backup is taken to the point to the moment the backup lands on our system to the moment it is um, the virtual fulls created or tiered off to cloud or to um, tape or replicated, you get what we call Oracle recovery validation every touch point. So all the blocks coming in and going out are verified that can be restored and recovered as a Oracle database. Uh, so quite a departure from storage mechanisms today, which don't have application awareness. The Oracle Recovery Appliance has this awareness built in and institutes this or enforces this on every touch point um, of the data as it moves to the system. And then we have uh, real-time protection status and monitoring, both on space and, and on um, access to the system, changes done to the system through our uh, special enterprise manager console for recovery appliance. So taking that architecture overview and then now putting this in a template for cybersecurity, kind of see how um, these capabilities really um, satisfy the CIA triad. You can see that we have um, on the left side backing up, we have mechanisms to do encryption of the data, both at the source with TDE, with in transit using ACTPS, and on the connections that ARM and clients make to the system to SQL net uh, encryption. So all these mechanisms uh, institute the um, encryption of the data right from the beginning uh, before it even lands um, on the uh, recovery appliance itself. And um, of course, the validation that I mentioned end to end, the retention policy that's managed uh, by the appliance um, does not require user intervention to do manual uh, deletions or checking if backups are obsolete uh, to run uh, in that way. Also independent separation of duty so that you have users who are uh, can access the production data, but cannot access the recovery appliance or any other system uh, from that uh, point on, such as tape or, or the recovery appliance in the, in the vault. Um, and then the resilient platform, which is the, the point I mentioned about Exadata uh, being our platform for running Oracle database loads, both in a resilient and secure fashion. Um, the recovery appliance inherits those capabilities themselves as well. So in a uh, cybersecurity architecture, I mentioned some of the capabilities that kind of fall out from our uh, inherent um, features today. But the recovery appliance can function now in a cyber vault um, uh, place, if you will. So apart from a DR kind of uh, system, you have the opportunity now to have a recovery appliance in your vault or as a pristine uh, data state um, for cyber Per, you know, cybersecurity purposes themselves. So customers that we speak to uh, have these vaults essentially both, you know, protected from a network access. Um, they have special fire rooms, they even, you know, kind of physically or 
to protect um, uh, people from accessing, say, the same building, but only have certain rooms that are accessible right, to certain users. So this, this special vault, if you will, um, has this pristine data, and it figures very well into how replic you know, our recovery appliance uh, replication works today. And then we have on the on the right side um, going down, we have our offsite tape read only once, right? You know, warm media that um, uh, that can that can be used, right? So you have a pristine copy that can't be affected apart from the actual uh, recovery appliance that's accepting data, creating the virtual tool, et cetera, um, process. So as we go through the next set of slides, it's kind of focus on each of these capabilities and um, how the recovery appliance relates to this through the uh, CIA triad. The first thing we'll look at is um, confidentiality, right? And so in this case, we're looking at the encryption at the source and we're also looking at retention to make sure that the data is uh, not you know, deleted before it, by any human means, before its uh, policy is set to, and also separation of duty. So going back to the CIA, a triad with confidentiality, you want to ensure that your production and backup data are encrypted end to end with strong key management policies. And so for this, um, I mentioned we use TDE, we recommend using TDE at the production data. TDE production data can be backed up uh, and uh, to the recovery appliance in the same way with incremental forever strategy with the real time redo, Every, all the various uh, efficiency capabilities remain intact with TDE data, and that's FIPS compliant as well, right, with uh, TDE. The Oracle um, database uh, security also provides integration with industry key stores. So, you know, Key Vault from Oracle is one example. Other, you know, um, sort of industry key store uh, products are available um, for use with Oracle, but essentially the Oracle uh, database key and how that's managed obviously is that it should be a big part of your plans, right? For this kind of security uh, and protection. The recovery appliance only offers two ways to get into the system from a data traffic perspective, and that is the SQL net for the ARM and connections, that is for catalog data, um, finding which backups are needed for restore, you know, querying the uh, history of backups, looking at the um, the backup records, right, um, for auditing purposes. Uh, so that's the SQL net connection for ARM and catalog connections to the appliance. And the second one is the HTTPS connection for in-transit encryption. So that's allowing you to further, um, in, you know, encrypt everything on the wire. Then it's decrypted before it's then um, processed by the recovery appliance. <clears throat> for application aware encryption, this is. Uh, uh, this point is, is handled by TDE. Uh, TDE is specific for the database. Uh, it has minimal performance impact um, to your uh, database itself. Exadata actually has specific optimizations between this at the storage cell level to be able to improve uh, further and further read write performance um, on TDE data. So again, application awareness of the data is key to providing the best security with the least amount of impact, right? to your um, production data access. Enforcement of, uh, separate, you know, of uh, duty among the IT roles is also important. You can see here in these points that recovery appliance has a specific role for its administrator. It is not shared by the DBA. Um, it is also not shared by any other user who needs to do um, reporting um, or any kind of monitoring of the system. Those three different roles can be separated and um, will not do not cross, right? Uh, we also have the, the role for the tape storage admin, which is separate from these roles as well. So um, one uh, common kind of example is um, today with the DBA backing up just traditionally to disk, um, they have ability to also delete backups, right? Yeah, RMN provides a, a wealth of uh, functionality and, and capabilities, but they can just execute a delete backup command in RMN and that backup is now gone, right, from disk. With the case of recovery appliance, uh, the recovery appliance actually can set up a policy, or the admin can set up a policy, so that the backups will actually be intercepted on any delete operations, so that you don't um, have the ability to modify or delete um, those backups, right? So uh, the policy only allows 
the recovery appliance uh, retention re recovery appliance retention policy to obsolete data when it's been expired um, on the system, but not any end user can go in and log in and delete data, uh, as with RMN, as I mentioned before. Similarly, the RA recovery appliance administrator um, cannot modify or delete production database data, right? So they only have access to the recovery appliance. They can see reports of the backups um, of the databases they belong to. They cannot actually look into the data itself um, to restore the data or to open the data for any kind of uh, means. And uh, right, the last point here is just about old backup data is only deleted per the um, retention policy authorized by the recovery appliance administrator role. Next point here is on integrity um, under our cybersecurity tenants. And this has to do with um, the uh, validity of the data to make sure that it is recoverable, uh, to make sure that the data has not been accessed or maligned, that's through auditing and monitoring. And also that we have um, read-only media that uh, at the hardware level prevents any kind of uh, intrusions, any kind of chance where backup data can be um, impacted. So under these uh, you know, kind of category, we have a number of points, as I mentioned before, uh, ensuring that production and backup data are validated for correctness and recoverability um, is, is paramount, right? And that can only be done through application level intelligence. And so in the database case, um, you need to have something running on that data and verifying that the backup data on a, on a continual basis um, can be recovered. The recovery plans were designed with this principle in mind, that it runs uh, validation processes used by Armin today when it does its actual restore, uh, pro uh, restore operations. And it does this apart from the production database. So no production database or Armin resources are needed to actually verify the data. So the data on the recovery appliance as it's you know, replicated to, uh, to the vault, as it's copied off to the cloud, or if it's copied off to our tape devices, at every touch point, that data is validated to make sure that nothing is missing, nothing has been maligned or corrupted um, in, you know, in between, and you get status when something is actually found that doesn't match up, that is at the Oracle block level, um, that doesn't match to what is expected for consistent recovery. Uh, you, you, the RA administrator, will get an immediate incident and then can follow that up with the DBA or other teams to ensure that things are then locked down. If it's an actual cyber attack, that you can close off network connections, that you can um, you know, stop all ingest activities or replication activities so that um, the data on the recovery appliance is, is held pristine. Uh, Enterprise Manager offers very um, in-depth real-time monitoring and reporting of database recoverability. And so um, you'll have very quick understanding and, and awareness when you have a backup that is uh, missing or that's been maligned, uh, you'll immediately see that databases become irrecoverable or they cannot be recovered um, to a point in time that they were able to before, right? So these metrics and alerts you can set up allow you to discover these things very quickly as opposed to, um, in a lot of cases, when you need to restore the data in the event of an attack, you then notice that the data has been compromised, that the backup data is not available, it's not consistent, it's corrupted. Um, that's the last time that you, know, that you want to be able to deal with that. You know, it's, it's not ideal. So knowing this upfront and being proactive about it obviously is, is the best uh, measure. The recovery appliance natively offloads data to tape worm um, and also to cloud if needed. And so this is allowing data to be kept on read-only media. That's really the only way to make sure data isn't modified or kept, uh, we call it immutable, is to keep it on, on media that is, uh, that is, you know, can't be overwritten, right? Um, and <clears throat> to make sure that user access to those, to that media is also guarded and, and logically separated from other roles. We also rely on Oracle Audit Vault to track production database access and change activities, very in-depth um, uh, product, if you will, uh, for the database side that allows you to track these user, uh, act, user changes and activities. On the recovery appliance side, out of the box, it provides quite uh, intensive
benefits of auditing as well for access to the system, for you know any users that are changing, say, policies on the system, changing retention, um, uh, you know, decommissioning databases, and you know, decommissioning backups of the databases, for example, when they're retired. So all these kinds of activities that touch the actual recovery appliance system are monitored in real time. And immediately you can get a report on what has happened as well to look at patterns to see if anything needs to be uh, investigated further. And then our last um, point here is on availability. And that is the system itself is resilient to attacks. Um, data can be restored and recovered um, in any uh, in, in any incident uh, uh, and completely recovered, right? And not just um, let yesterday's backup, but everything up to the moment that the attack happened can be re recovered. And so um, we do this through uh, through hardened uh, resilient architecture that Exadata uh, already provides. Um, the system is specifically designed uh, for database workloads and we chose the exadata platform as the uh, as the foundation if you will for our hardware and our storage uh, uh, mechanisms so this includes hardened password policies os and db user auditing firewall support uh, and integrated lights out management um, everything that you uh, have seen from, from the exadata security side recovery appliance uh, can take advantage of and you know, kind of give you that first level of resiliency right out of the box. As I mentioned that the network access protocols to the recovery appliance are limited to SQLnet and HTTPS. There's no you know, network attached storage or any kind of NFS file access and um, those kinds of mechanisms are typical for uh, traditional storage devices. Uh, this is strictly a RMAN um, native, if you will, uh, integrated uh, solution and the traffic is only possible through our recovery appliance backup module, which integrates directly with RMAN uh, for those uh, backup and restore traffic. You can also institute um, VLAN tagging, which is another mechanism to isolate uh, database zones that are being backed up. So this allows uh, uh, backup restore traffic to be on non-routable network zones. So you can kind of uh, even be more flexible and allow uh, certain databases to only have access to certain from st different zones and, and different zones only have restore access from from the recovery appliance right you you have full flexibility to establish VLAN network zones uh, across your client databases with the recovery appliance you know as an appliance we simplify the patching and maintenance of the system so that we do kind of as few processes as needed um, to do patching, for example. Uh, our patching process incorporates all compute, storage, and networking components, um, as well as the recovery plan software itself. And so uh, this reduces the need to have to do kind of uh, your own uh, kind of point patching, if you will, um, as you might do with a database today. But uh, our appliance patching is covered in one kind of process and one operation that you run. And so by inherently reducing the touch points for uh, human, human intervention and, uh, and potential for introducing some change or other alignment to the process. And then our third uh, kind of bullet uh, to end this topic is recovering the data without data loss, right? You can uh, have all the data captured in real time by the recovery appliance and when an attack happens, uh, immediately shut down the network to our system. Uh, all the data received up to the point will be converted into archive logs, and you can then have these backups restored to separate machines, separate network zones, you know, um, basically in a pristine condition uh, without any data loss. Right? So uh, system, any systems today, uh, man you know, managed by storage-backed uh, storage -back bases, um, can give you uh, protection uh, of all the data being copied, but then the validation of that data to make sure it's consistent and to ensure that proactively that everything is is there and usable um, cannot be uh, provided right by storage um, products. Right? That's just not inherently available to storage products. With the recovery appliance, we've actually melded the Oracle database intelligence or and specifically for restore and recovery validation um, into a engineered system box for, for uh, storage.
storage purposes, right? And uh, performance and scalability. So it's trying to bring together the best, best of both worlds for database protection. So as a summary, I uh, just wanna cover uh, these, you know, these highlights here. You know, cyber protection uh, is a rapidly growing conversation. Uh, if you've not heard about it yet, you'll, you will hear about it. Um, it. It hits both business and government sectors. It's kind of across the board. Um, the Oracle databases really serve mission critical business functions. I mean, that's kind of the mainstay of, uh, you know, our, our, our customer base, right, is um, that data is, is critical. There are features and capabilities of the database needed by enterprises um, for that mission critical activities. And so protection and recovery of that data in the event of attacks is extremely vital, right? And to do that without losing production or backup data is, is the goal. Um, with the recovery appliance, we provide that, right? And it also offers the most efficient uh, backup uh, technology, right, through Incremental Forever and, and the real-time redo uh, uh, shipping capabilities that we have. It inherits resiliency through the Oracle Exadata stack that it's built on, um, the validation done, again, uh, at all touch points, uh, kind of brings together the solution, and it gives you kind of the, the confidence and also for your auditing teams, the ability to say, here's our backups, here's their status, here's their recoverability, um, also a history of all the kind of activities that happened on the backups themselves uh, is much more in depth and much more tuned and specific for Oracle databases there. So this solution really does meet the CI security tenants for cyber threats beyond what um, traditional backup storage um, can do today. So the call to action here for you, uh, and hopefully this was informative and, and help you to see some new things um, and how, how to address kind of cybersecurity, you know, survey your mission critical databases, uh, take stock and, and take a look at what you're doing today with backup recovery, and then look at, you know, your exposure to cybersecurity attacks, you know, um, look at kind of the ways that your databases can be uh, compromised from a, both a data perspective and also user access perspective. Uh, and to also note what your recovery service level agreements are, right? Because at the end of the day, your business is kind of what you're supporting. Uh, and so the recovery SLAs have to match to what the business operations need for their um, activities and for the company as, as a whole. Right? Feel free to uh, reach out to us um, in our Ask Tom session page, we have a, a feedback uh, you know, question section. You can ask, you can ask us a question, um, ask for more guidance um, on what next steps you can take. Uh, we're happy to help, you know, um, both on assessing and also providing uh, next steps on possible solution um, for your enterprises. So with that, um, I'd like to turn it over to any other additional questions. Um, I see one question that was answered already here, uh, but also if you would like to, you know, uh, unmute yourself. You can also do that um, to ask a question. Yep. Um, just to highlight, do we see a question about um, uh, XSCS customers today? Yeah. Um, and so. <clears throat> With, with XSCS databases, uh, we have uh, flashback recovery manager and object storage, right? Um, technologies that um, allow you to back up and to protect those assets. And uh, we have a roadmap down the road to um, incorporate the recovery appliance type of functionality that I presented into uh, the OCI uh, environment as well. So, you know, be on the lookout for such a service uh, offering in the future. Uh, not seeing any of the questions here. Um, we will post this recording um, to our Ask Tom site. As I mentioned, you you know can feel free to query us, send your question, uh, ask for assistance, any of your um, assessments of your backup recovery strategies, especially on the cybersecurity front, and uh, we'll be happy to assist uh, going forward. So thank you again for attending the session. Uh, we look forward to our next um, office hour session. Uh, in the near future.